we falsely and offensively call the anointing the Holy Ghost or call the Holy Ghost the anointing so knock it off is what I'm saying the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrott I thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure that you subscribe and maybe even ring the bell there I'm going to make a few statements tonight that most likely will irritate people but in a way it's going to clear up some things hopefully say clear up some things that uh, we've been ignorantly accused of the ignorance isn't on our part the ignorance is on the accusers part because they don't understand what's going on we know who we're worshiping we know why we worship him we know that he's God in the earth today Acts chapter 17 verse 22 then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said ye men of Athens I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious for as I passed by and beheld your devotions I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God whom therefore you ignorantly worship him declare I unto you they're worshiping the unknown God well God's idea is not to be unknown his idea is to be known to you mm -hmm. and like I said earlier we know who we worship we worship the Living God who is the Holy Ghost are you here yes. if I told you that the Holy Ghost is God would you worship him yes. some would say no and to that I say why I'm gonna answer some of that tonight aren't you glad yeah. well number one it's because of their doctrine Jesus said in mark 7 13 you don't have to turn there mark 7 13 says that by your traditions you make the Word of God ineffectual or of no effect so they have traditions that supersede the word even if I showed you in the word that the Holy Ghost is the Living God right yes. And that we're supposed to worship the living God and then I say we're supposed to worship the Holy Ghost they would still go no why would they say no because of their traditions they were brought up differently thinking differently mm -hmm. Does this make sense yes. so because I say oh what if I told you that the Holy Ghost is God would you worship him you should worship him you go you find out who is God you should worship him right, right? Yes. and yet some would say no now we're accused of wrongdoing by worshiping the Holy Ghost have you heard this before mm -hmm. oh you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost where do they get this from it's not scripture that they're getting it from they're getting it from their doctrine and the way they've been taught and brought up so we're accused of what some would call heresy by people who don't know him the fact is if you knew him as God you would worship him are you here yeah if God were to present himself to you in a room and you knew him as God you should worship him as God mm -hmm. the problem is people don't know him as God right so they know him as something else say they know him, they know him. as something else they know him as a power they know him as an anointing in fact if we look at all the phrases and the catchphrases that we use especially in Pentecostal circles and word of faith circles and full gospel circles all of these circles that believe in the power of the Holy Ghost we're constantly talking about the anointing we're constantly talking about the gifts of the Spirit and we say that though that's the Holy Ghost so when someone hears that we worship the Holy Ghost their thinking is that we're worshiping the gifts or we're worshiping the anointing they are sadly mistaken. they are ignorant mm -hmm. they're ignorant of two things they're ignorant of who we're actually worshiping mm -hmm. and they're ignorant of the fact that he is God and they should be worshiping him yes. are you here yes. we're accused of things by people who don't know him they don't know him as God they think that he's an anointing they think he's a power of God so they're taught in this common phraseology because we know this someone falls out in the spirit what do they say that's the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. someone begins to speak with tongues what do they say that's the Holy Ghost 
we're not we're not differentiating what we need to differentiate that's a gift of the Holy Ghost that's a power of the Holy Ghost that's an anointing of the Holy Ghost but that's not the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. because if that's all they're brought up in understanding that, that well that's the Holy Ghost no wonder they think if we're worshiping the Holy Ghost that we're wrong we're not worshiping a gift we're not worshiping a manifestation are you here yes. that would be wrong but that's not what we're doing and I find it frankly offensive mm -hmm. that people would even think that just shows me where their thinking's at in John 4 22 Jesus says we know whom we worship you got to know who you worship right mm -hmm. they didn't on Mars Hill Paul began to speak to them about the living God say the living God, the living God. who do we know is the living God the Holy Ghost. where is he today in the he's in the earth he's with us he's in you what know you not that your body is the temple of the living God mm -hmm. what know you not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. should you worship the living God yes so I personally find it offensive that the Holy Ghost is almost always referred to as an anointing does this bother you it bothers me because I hear people all the time they refer to the Holy Ghost as an anointing or when they see an anointing or they see something happen they refer to that as being the Holy Ghost that is not the Holy Ghost it's an anointing of the Holy Ghost That's right. we are not worshiping the anointing say we, we are, not are not worshiping, worshiping the, anointing. the anointing are we no. we're worshiping him Amen. the God who gives the anointing are you here well let's just look at this a little farther Luke chapter 8 verse 43 and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years which had spent all her living upon physicians neither could be healed of any so they gave the money back is that what it says uh -huh. yes yeah, sure came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched and Jesus said who touched me and when all denied Peter and they that were with him said master the multitude thronging thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me verse 46 and Jesus said somebody has touched me for I perceive that virtue hath gone out of me Jesus Jesus is just there doing his thing right and someone snuck up and touched the border the hem of his garment and what came out of Jesus power came out of Jesus that's what virtue means power and we know that to be the anointing mm -hmm. did Jesus say who hath touched me for the Holy Ghost went out of me no where did he go he went over there he went over here what went out of Jesus power the anointing went out of Jesus did the Holy Ghost go out of Jesus no, no. was Jesus confused about it no. so he says I perceive that power or anointing has gone out of me he did not say that the Holy Ghost left him or went out of him yeah. we falsely and offensively call the anointing the Holy Ghost or call the Holy Ghost the anointing mm -hmm. so knock it off is what I'm saying clarify the difference between the two the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today he does give anointings he does have gifts mm -hmm. but those are not him yeah. Luke chapter 4 verse 16 and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his <laughs> custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written verse 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me you see the difference here the Spirit of the Lord was upon him he hath anointed him now the word anointing there a lot of people would know this if you look it up it literally means to smear or to spread like oil upon was the Holy Ghost smeared and spread like oil upon Jesus no he's the one who did that say he's the one, he's the one. Who, did who did that who did what who smeared anointing on Jesus mm -hmm. who did the Holy Ghost the Spirit of the Lord 
the spirit of the lord is upon me because he, he hath anointed him to preach so there's anointing to preach isn't there mm -hmm. is that the holy ghost no the holy ghost anoints a preacher to preach That's right. you see mm -hmm. i want to heal or to, to deliver or to do all of these things that he goes on and lists that's not the holy ghost that's the anointing of the holy ghost the holy ghost is not power the holy ghost gives power the holy ghost is god mm -hmm. are you here i hope you're getting this anyway so in acts chapter 19 we see that the uh the anointing is transferable in cloth you want to turn over there real quick why not I'm just touching on a lot of these things I mean I could go into depth on almost all of them but we're not going to let's go to Acts chapter 19 and then look at verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them so most likely we have Paul praying over some handkerchiefs or aprons right and then they took them to the diseased people or the possessed people they put it on the person and what happened the anointing went into them yeah. so let me ask you a question did the holy ghost go into those napkins no. has the holy ghost now moved into napkins no. does the holy ghost live in napkins no. are you seeing how ridiculous this yes. is and yet we'll go that was the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost no that was the anointing in a napkin mm -hmm. yes. otherwise we would be worshiping the napkin mm -hmm. that's anointed are you here right. that's why to me it's so offensive when people say that that's what they're thinking in their head they're wrong I'm not worshiping the anointing that's in a napkin or in anything else I'm worshiping the Living God the Holy Ghost is this making sense in a napkin so many people know the anointing they know the gifts of the Spirit are you here mm -hmm. anyone who receives the Holy Ghost and begins to speak with other tongues knows the anointing say the anointing, the anointing. because there's an anointing to speak in other tongues they know the anointing mm -hmm. many of them know the gifts of the Spirit many preachers know the anointing to preach Jesus was anointed to preach are you here yes. many of them have different anointings and gifts of the Spirit that they can move in but it's still an anointing are you still here yes. many people know the anointing at varying degrees and levels I testify to it I pray in tongues for an hour at the end of the hour I have much more of an anointing that I'm familiar with but that anointing never turns into the Holy Ghost many people know the anointing especially in many of the groups and circles we run in right mm -hmm. that's the anointing that's the anointing that's the anointing mm -hmm. but they know nothing of me says the Spirit of the Lord they know the anointing some in great measure but they know nothing of him because if they knew him listen they would worship him mm -hmm. as God but they're happy to know the anointing at greater and greater measure Jude says but you beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost now here we see that if we pray in the Spirit say pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. we're praying in the Holy Ghost and he's going to help us and build us up on our most holy faith but he can't build you up on something that you don't have he's building you up on your most holy faith are you here yes. I'm trying to take you somewhere what is your faith are, have you been brought up in the faith that worships the Holy Ghost or have you been brought up in some other faith that says you can't worship the Holy Ghost because he can only build you up so far. I'm gonna take you to scripture here I'm not just making this up he can only build you up on your most holy faith he can only take you as far as your faith will allow what were you born into or born again into it's very difficult for people to get out of that place where they were brought up in different belief systems or whatever it is mm -hmm. very difficult Matthew chapter 22 and then let's look at verse 29 
jesus answered and said unto them you do err or make an error or make a mistake not knowing the scriptures nor the power of god it takes both of them mm -hmm. if you have an error in your scripture the power of god can only go so far jesus answered and said to them you do err i like to think of it this way you ever you ever remember the old uh, uh pinball machines yeah. if you push it too hard what happens tilt and then your little paddles stop working yeah. the little flipper things stop working right yes. and you may get a few more points pink pink as the ball slowly goes down the last time what happened you pushed it too hard you made an error it tilted well how many times do you suppose this happens when i say the holy ghost is god in the earth today and you should worship him walk with him by saying words that tilts people in the way they thought or how they've been brought up this make sense yes. can they go there no their paddle stops working your paddle has stopped working mm. you do err not knowing the scriptures or the power of God I've taken you to many many scriptures especially over the course of all of these videos we put up here that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today you understand mm -hmm. he's the only God in the earth today and we walk with him mm -hmm. he's the living God scripture after scripture after scripture but if those scriptures if you're not receiving them and you're looking at them through your traditions it's gonna make them ineffectual and you will tilt you'll make an error so you got to have both it takes both it takes the power of God and it takes correct scriptural interpretation mm -hmm. and then when you pray in the anointing or pray in other tongues you can be built up on your most holy faith and it will take you places praying in tongues with the right doctrine should lead you to knowing the Holy Ghost as God are you here yes. praying in tongues with the right doctrine say the right doctrine, the right doctrine should lead you to know the Holy Ghost as God and therefore worship him praying in tongues is an anoint is an anointing we know that right build you up on your most holy faith it's an anointing it's a known anointing known by millions of people it's a known anointing but praying in tongues no matter how much can never please listen to me can never lead you to know the Holy Ghost as God and worship him if your doctrine is flaky if your doctrine keeps you from that i just read you a verse of scripture you do err not knowing the scriptures or the power of god mm -hmm. they can never go there because their doctrine preached usually by a preacher has told them not to go there mm -hmm. and a lot of them are brought up in it and so when they say that oh you're you guys are weird you're or you're a cult praying in tongues alone won't get you there i hope i showed you that do you know we have people all over the earth praying in tongues that that don't go here that they never get to the point of knowing him as god and worshiping him why why they should it should lead them there but it can't because they're erring they're tilting their doctrine is keeping them from it that's why we have people that may be full of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit and operating in different anointings mm -hmm. but they're not going to certain places because their doctrine's all squirrely and messed up is this making sense that was my point I'm not trying to get on anyone praying in tongues is you yielding to the anointing it never becomes the Holy Ghost can you understand that mm -hmm. that's you yielding to an anointing that he gave you mm -hmm. say when I pray in tongues, pray in tongues I'm, yielding I'm yielding to the anointing, the anointing. that the Holy Ghost gave me it never becomes him he's never that anointing are you here yeah. now you can see why people don't know what we're even talking about because they think that that anointing is the Holy Ghost are you getting this yeah. you can understand my dilemma here and how I'm trying to get this across to people we don't worship the anointing we worship the Living God who gives anointings huge difference mm -hmm. are you seeing this does this matter yeah. i think it matters a lot because i think it's one of the 
doctrines that causing people to make an error in not worshiping the Holy Ghost especially when it's it's replete throughout so much of the body of Christ that when we talk about the Holy Ghost that's really all we're talking about is the anointing the anointing this the anointing that the gifts of the Spirit here the gifts of the Spirit there so praying in tongues is not the Holy Ghost these are the couple of things that I was gonna say that I think people won't like. Praying in tongues is not the Holy Ghost. You can understand it now, right? Falling out in the Spirit is not the Holy Ghost. Do I believe in praying in tongues? Yeah. Do I believe in falling out in the Spirit? Yes! But that's not the Holy Ghost. If you think that's the Holy Ghost and you think that's what I'm saying when I say we worship the Holy Ghost, no wonder you think we're whacked. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're talking about. And I'm trying to clarify that. Is this making sense? Yes. Sure, I like to fall out in the Spirit. Done it many times myself. I recommend it. But that's not the Holy Ghost. That's an anointing. Are you here? Mm -hmm. So praying in tongues is an anointing. It is not. The Holy Ghost falling out in the Spirit is not the Holy Ghost, it, it's an anointing. It, an anointed anything is not the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Anointed preaching is not the Holy Ghost. He's a Holy Ghost preacher and he's really anointed. Are you seeing this? Yeah. You see why we have such a problem here? Not here, but we're, cor we're correcting the problem that we have with people who believe in the gifts of the Spirit the gifts of the spirit anointing not the holy ghost mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds funny doesn't it why because we were brought up this way ah remember in luke chapter 4 verse 17 he hath anointed who was the he that anointed the spirit of the lord mm -hmm. hath anointed he the person of the spirit of the lord hath anointed and then Jesus went on and manifested many of the gifts of the Spirit when the lady touched him with the issue of blood what went out of Jesus power not the Holy Ghost it came from the anointing that the Holy Ghost put on Jesus are you getting this we're not worshiping the gift we're not worshiping the anointing we're worshiping the God who gives them vast and huge difference the anointing as we can see and I showed you remember we talked about Paul and the handkerchief mm -hmm. right the anointing is a thing it's a tangible thing many times and it's something that can be put on something else they took the handkerchief and put it on somebody else was that the Holy Ghost remember we saw how ridiculous that was to say that it was the Holy Ghost these things are the, what the Holy Ghost puts on people it's not the Holy Ghost it's what the Holy Ghost puts on them the anointing is a thing tangible many times and we don't worship things do we no. do you worship a thing no it becomes ridiculous that that's what people think we don't worship things even if it's a thing from God we're not ignorant of whom we worship and just because you know the thing doesn't mean you know him because we got the whole body of Christ is full of this like I've said how many times if you knew him as God you would worship him as God but people know the thing they're happy to know the thing what thing do you say the thing the anointing the gift the manifestation and we have preachers we have people that have gone their whole life knowing the manifestations of the gift and not knowing him as God are you here how oh, could that be I've been showing you how that be just because you know the thing doesn't mean you know him Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 and he will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works what would these things entail the gifts of the Spirit have we not done all of these things mm -hmm. operated the gifts of the Spirit in your name what does he say and then I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me 
you that work iniquity are you here yeah. is this possible is it possible I hope you can see that it is mm -hmm. to know the gifts of the Spirit to know a gift of the Spirit to know an anointing of the Holy Ghost a thing and not know him yes and what keeps you from knowing him is your doctrine that has told you you couldn't go there many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in that name prophesying is part of the gifts of the Spirit the gift of prophecy mm -hmm. is one of the gifts of the Spirit so it's possible to operate in an anointing and not know the one who anoints yes. and who's the one who anoints the Holy Ghost the Spirit of the Lord the fact that you think wrongly that when I say I worship you Holy Ghost you think that I'm worshiping an anointing or worshiping a gift tells me exactly where you're at you don't know him as God if you knew him as God the Holy Ghost you would worship him are you ready to change this will change your life I'm gonna tell you how to change your life say how, how? to change, change. My, life my life is to begin put that old doctrine aside that's keeping you from going here recognize that he is the living God and begin to worship him use the words I worship you Holy Ghost so he told me this early he said bring them in here with me and I will take care of their every need want and desire if they will but worship me does God have the ability to take care of every need want and desire that you could possibly have yes. and he says he will do it he will take care of your every need want and desire if you will but worship him he has sent me here to tell you this yeah but that goes outside of my doctrine makes me tilt I know you're gonna you're gonna have to not tilt and you're gonna have to go here that's why I said it's a change say it's a change. it's a change and you will change when you start using the words I worship you Holy Ghost and worshiping him as God in the earth today it's the number one thing say the number one thing number one. that begins to happen is you begin to change Your God.